Good evening and welcome to tonight's PACET webinar. And tonight we will be talking about test taking tips as in how to prepare for and take industry certification exams. I'm Brian Farrell. I am the course mentor for PACET's TNI program, that's Techno Technology and Integration Support. I'm also the instructor for CIS, which amazingly enough is uh, correlates to the PACET TNI program. Tonight we will be talking about preparing for the exam and then taking the exam. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into preparing for the exam. So where do you start? Well, let's start with the weeks leading up for the exam. The first thing that I need to say is you really should review the exam objectives. That means that you need to actually know what the exams cover. Now, in the TNI program, uh, there are three basic exams. There's two exams for A+, and there's one exam for Network+. Plus. Now, for A+, plus, <coughs> excuse me, the two tests are the 220-801 and the 220-802. And I've given, given you a link here, actually an address, to look at CompTIA's objectives for those exams. And then for Network Plus, currently you can take the N10-005. One moment. So you can take the N10-005, and there's the link right there, or the web address for those objectives. Uh, coming up, as in uh, beginning in August or at the end of August, the N10-005 will no longer be available, and it'll be the N10-006. So I've given you that address as well. But you should review the objectives so that you know what you should be studying for. CompT is very good about lining out exactly what you need to know. They don't give you the information, but they do give you uh, at least the, the areas that you need to be prepared to know. So continuing on with the weeks leading up to the exam, uh, the first thing that I'll say is follow the curriculum path laid out by the course and your student mentor. That course map has been and plan has been developed to present the material in the best possible manner, the most efficient manner. If you follow that outline, you will get through the material in a reasonable amount of time and in a reasonable manner. The next thing that you need to do is you need to set goals and objectives with your student mentor and then be accountable to that student mentor. You know, the student mentor is a valuable resource whose whole goal is to keep you on track in proceeding to the plan. Uh, being accountable to your student mentor means that when you talk with your mentor, uh, let your mentor know what your goal is for the week or work with the mentor to establish what your goal is for the week and then Fulfill that goal. Be honest with your mentor. Uh, and always make your appointments. Keep your appointments with your mentor. And the next thing that you need to do to keep on track is you need to develop a study schedule and stick to it. And as I put here, that should actually be part of your goal setting process with your student mentor. Plan out each day when you're going to study. It works better, by the way, if the time that you study can be the same time every day. Now, I do recommend that setting aside a minimum of two hours a day or a maximum of four hours a day, and that would be five to six days a week. Now, I've done online courses before. As a matter of fact, two of my degrees come from online. 
on, online study. And what I did, what I found to be effective for me, and this is only for me, by the way, is I found it effective for me to get up at 4.15 every morning and be starting my studies by 4.30. What that allowed me to do is to get some, a couple of hours of study time in before anybody else in my family woke up. So that allowed me a couple of hours of distraction-free study. And I actually did that six days a week. Another thing that you should be doing is you should be attending these webinars. Attend the webinars that the course mentors host. Uh, not only do they present material there that might not be in the normal course material, but that gives you a chance to interact with the course mentor and ask questions. You can ask questions of me, and guess what? I've taken the exams. Uh, I can give you some tips and tricks, and I can help you figure out where you need to spend your time. But if you don't, if you don't attend the webinars, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Continuing on, if you have any questions about the course material, material reach out to your student mentor and or to the course mentor. If you feel you need additional material in order to help you study, guess what? Contact your student mentor and or course mentor. Uh, both of us have uh, ideas of additional resources. You know, while Pace IT provides you with enough material to take and pass these industry certification exams, there is more material out there. And if you do don't feel like doing that, guess what? Google the subject that you're interested in or you think you might need more information on. The Internet is your friend and your friend wants to help you succeed. Another thing that also helps, this helps you to retain information as you cover the material in Pace Out, or excuse me, in Pace It. Take notes. Write your own notes. This will help cement the material in your brain so it's available once you take once you start taking the test. Now, once you finish the material for an industry exam, schedule the exam. Um, you need to schedule the exam to as close as possible to when you finish the material. Why? Because the material will still be fresh in your mind. Also, your confidence level will be higher if you've just gotten done covering the material than if you wait weeks or months before you take the exam. You also need to make sure that when you do schedule the exam, that you schedule it for a time when you know you are at your sharpest. As a general rule, I try not to take any certification exams after about 1 o'clock in the afternoon because I know that's when my brain starts to fog up. I really prefer to take my tests before, before 10 o'clock in the morning. That's just because that's when I'm sharpest. So now that we're out of days, out of certain days, out of weeks leading up to the exam, let's talk about the days leading up to the exam. So find and use flashcards to refresh your memory. I really recommend not using flashcards more than about half an hour a day, but you know, just kind of flip through them on occasion. You should you should by this time know where your weakest areas are. So go back and recover that material. Refresh your knowledge in those weak areas. Another thing that I recommend is take practice exams. Now the best practice exams are the ones that come that have a large bank of questions and where the question or order of the questions is randomized. So you can retake the test and you get different questions. Now the day before the exam, Okay, this is your last day of preparation. The first thing that I'll say is don't cram. Don't don't try and get too much into your head. Why? Because it just leads to confusion and stress. 
the day before, you should make sure that you're eating balanced meals. That'll help your body to feel good, and when your body feels good, your mind feels good. Also, get plenty of rest the night before the exam. That way you're good and sharp and well rested the day of the exam. Now on the day of the exam, again, eat good balanced meals. If you're taking the morning exam, eat eat a good breakfast. If you're taking a, uh, an afternoon exam, eat a good breakfast, eat a good lunch. Not too heavy, but good balanced meals. That keeps your energy up, and if your energy is up, you feel good. You also need to know where you're going to be taking the exam. There are different exam centers, and it's up to you when you schedule to know where you're going to be taking that exam. You should also know how long it's going to take you to get there. That relieves a lot of the stress on the day of the exam. You should arrive at the testing center a little bit early, approximately a half an hour before the start of the exam. I know that they tell you about 15, 20 minutes. Generally, I shoot for about 45 minutes because that allows me to get settled in. You know, I just got done with a drive to somewhere. If I show up about 45 minutes early, that gives me a chance to settle, settle down, get calm, get focused, and to get checked in. Now, when you go to take your exam, you need to bring your identification. Some testing centers do require you to use two pieces of identification, so be prepared with that. So I would bring two pieces of identification. You should also bring your notes with you. Now, you can't actually take the notes into the exam with you, but you know what? While you're waiting to be checked in, and you're waiting to be seated for your exam, you can review your notes. Get that stuff a little bit fresh. Uh, don't do it too much. But, but this is an opportunity to do a little bit of last-minute review. Now let's talk about taking the exam. So know the time allowance for your exam that you've chosen. 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 Now in most, well actually I think in all of the CompTIA exams that I've ever taken, they allow you 90 minutes. Uh, that should give you plenty of time. I know it doesn't seem like a whole lot of time, but that should give you plenty of time to take the exam. You also should know the approximate number of questions. Currently, for the A plus exam, uh, both our exams uh, for A plus, both sections have up to 90 questions each. Now, if you're taking the N10-005 Network Plus exam, that's up to 100 questions. And I just noticed a typo on my, my slide here, so I'm going to verbally correct it. The N10-006, the new Network Plus exam, that has up to 90 questions. Uh, just, just so you know, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I took both the N10-005 and the N10-006, and in both cases, they both had 90 questions. Then you should have a firm understanding of the types of questions. Okay, so the different types of questions. There's going to be the possibility of simulation type questions. This is where they ask you to perform a task. Uh, one of the ones that I remember is I had to pick the proper cabling scheme for the TIA EIA 568A standard. By the way, that's white, green, green, white, orange, blue, white, blue, orange, white, brown, brown. If you're talking about the T568B standard, that would be white, orange, orange, white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Then there are going to be matching questions. Those are usually your drag and drop type questions. And finally, the vast majority of the exams are made up of multiple choice. 
and in most CompTIA exams, when you're doing multiple choice, when they're looking for a single answer, you can easily eliminate one or two of the choices because they're obviously the incorrect answer. So now let's talk a little bit more about taking the exam. Do not second guess yourself. Be confident when you answer the questions. Particularly on multiple choice questions, most of the time the first answer that you pick is going to be the correct answer. So if you pick something, if, if you read the question, you read the answers, and you say, I think it's this one, and you pick it, don't change it, okay? Don't change it, because it's like 90% of the time, you are, you are correct. So what do you do if you don't know the answer? Well, if it's multiple choice, eliminate the obviously incorrect answers. Narrow down the field. That should help you be able to pick the answer. If that still doesn't do it for you, there's, you you're given the opportunity on CompTIA exams to mark the question. So you mark the question, you fill the little checkbox, and you move on. Why is that? Well, because if time allows at the end of the exam, you're given a chance to go back and review your responses. This gives you the opportunity to revisit those questions that you've marked for review. That way, at the end of the exam, you can go back and answer those questions that you didn't answer before. Uh, that way you get the majority of the questions done that you do know, and then you can go back and answer, try and answer the questions that you weren't too sure about. The next thing that you need to do is you need to try and not spend too much time on any one question. If you're struggling to figure out the, the, the answer to the question, mark it and move on. Come back to it at the end of the exam. And when you're revisiting those ones that you marked, as you answer them, undo the checkbox on the mark and move on to the next one. If you're not sure, leave it marked and move on to the next one. Leave those really tough questions to the absolute last, if, if possible. Now, if you do pass, Great. Send a copy of the exam results sheet to your student mentor. If you don't pass, eh, that's too bad, but you still need to send a copy of the exam results sheet to your student mentor and to the certificate mentor. Also, on CompTIA exams, if you fail, the results sheet will tell you what areas you missed or you failed to answer a question correctly. This can help you in studying to retake the exam. So once you, if you failed and you look at that, you need to determine how much time you're going to need before you retake the exam. I really don't recommend more than two weeks. Ideally, you should wait about a week. Now, remember, you need to be confident. You've got this covered. You're going to pass the exam if you follow most of these tips and tricks. By the way, coming back, coming back here to my one of my opening slides, if you look, all of these cert certifications that I have off to the right, those all involved taking certification exams. And by the way, the first time that I took the network not network, the A-plus exam, I failed. I failed big time. But I tell you what, what it did is it told me what areas I needed to study, and I was able to go back and retake the exam a little while later, and I passed. So I'm sure that you can do the same thing, okay? Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this webinar. And you know what? I do these every week, and you're more than welcome to attend them. Now, thank you again for attending, and I will talk to you later.